We all know those people in our lives who we know are going to succeed in their lives. Someone who works hard and puts their all into everything they do. We also know someone who is genuine, kind, and giving, spending their lives doing what they can to help others. And in this case, those two types of people found each other and created what seemed like a healthy, stable relationship that others could look on and envy. But in this case, one of the people in this couple lost their temper and their actions resulted in the worst possible outcome for everyone involved. But before we get into the case, I have a very exciting quick announcement that I want to make to you all. I will actually be attending CrimeCon in Nashville this year. I'm so excited to be able to attend all three days this year. I will also have a table this time for you guys to visit. I cannot express enough how excited I am for this. And if you have not yet gotten your ticket, you can get a nice little 10% discount when you use code Rachel Shannon. I will have CrimeCon linked below for anyone who hasn't gotten their tickets yet. I cannot wait to see you guys there. Okay, with that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the tragic case of Ryan Watson. Ryan Watson was 24 years old when his life was tragically and violently ended. Those who knew Ryan described him as having such a big personality. He was bubbly, fun-loving, and caring. Very kind-hearted and helpful. He was the type of person who would do anything for anyone. Ryan was known to love animals, especially dogs. He was known to be athletic and talented in sports such as football, BMX biking, and pool. He loved hanging out with friends and listening to music just like any 24-year-old man does. At the time, Ryan worked as a support worker for Headway, a nonprofit brain injury organization. Headway is known for doing charity work all around the UK, working to improve the lives of anyone who sustained a brain injury by helping to provide vital support and information services. Clearly, Ryan was the type of person who wanted to help others. Overall, he was kind, intelligent, and wanted the best for anyone in his life. Ryan grew up in Cheadle, a quiet small town at the edge of Stashfordshire in Moorlands in the UK. It was there where he met 24-year-old Alice Wood, with whom he started a relationship in March of 2020. Alice Wood is the daughter of Deborah Sproston and Trevor Wood, who were divorced at the time, and she had two brothers. Those who knew Alice described her as quiet and studious. Throughout her life, she was always a very intelligent, clever girl with a promising future. In secondary school, Alice was a part of the gifted and talented group. She was a straight-A student who was very ambitious and had high expectations for herself and her future. In her free time, her and her mother loved going to the pub for quiz nights. At the time, she was almost done with her senior year at Manchester University. After that, she was about to begin a master's program at the prestigious Cambridge University, where she would study theology, philosophy, and ethics. She was destined for greatness. Six months after Ryan and Alice began dating, the two were engaged. By October of 2021, the two bought a £120,000 home in Road Heath in Cheshire with the help of their parents. They seemed to live a very simple and happy life. They had four dogs, Alice was an intelligent university student, while Ryan was a charity worker whose life work was to improve the life of others. On the night of May 6th, 2020, Ashley and Ryan went to a 60th birthday party for one of the clients that Ryan worked with at Headway. When they first arrived to the party, Alice and Ryan were seen carrying a gift bag before sitting at a table together with drinks in hand, laughing with one another, and having a good time. According to others at the party, Ryan was known as being the life of the party. He was always dancing around, chatting to the other partygoers, and even helped an older woman after she fell on the ground at this specific party. Meanwhile, Alice's demeanor was described as a bit cold. At some point in the night, Ryan got to talking with another woman who also worked at Headway as a service worker, Tiffany Faraday. According to Tiffany, the two clicked and continued chatting for a while, and eventually, it seemed that Alice was sort of pushed out of the conversation. After that happened, Tiffany could tell that Alice was getting annoyed. As Ryan was dancing around and having fun, 
Alice just sat there and watched, not really participating. Eventually, Tiffany felt like Alice was just seething and was sitting there staring at her as she went on and chatted with Ryan for a bit longer. At some point, Tiffany said that Alice warned Ryan to watch what he was drinking. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. However, eventually, Tiffany left the party, leaving just Alice and Ryan, as well as the other partygoers. By around 11 p.m., the two ended up leaving, getting into Ryan's car with him driving home. However, when they arrived home, according to neighbors, Ryan and Alice were yelling at each other, having some sort of heated argument. Ryan was heard yelling, oh god, not this again, before kicking the door of the car and trying to walk away. However, during the argument, Alice, who had several drinks that night, hopped into her Ford Fiesta and was about to start driving. The next bit of information is gathered from CCTV footage. I wasn't able to find anywhere that had the full footage all at once. Most of the video only shows tiny snippets of the altercation, so I will put it all together to the best of my abilities, but if it seems choppy and like there's parts cut off or it just abruptly stops, that is why I tried my best to get as much footage as I could. Either way, after Alice gets in her car, Ryan is seen walking on the pavement towards the home when all of a sudden, Alice backs up the car right towards him, causing him to leap out of the way. There is a few minutes where you can see Alice driving up and down the driveway, looking like she's trying to hit Ryan with the car. Then she backs all the way out into the street while Ryan tries to cross the driveway and go home. But then you can see Alice driving back up, hitting Ryan, causing him to fall onto the hood of the car. But he stands back up, faces the car and Alice, before Alice drives towards him once again, hitting him again, and this time he is trapped under the car. She continues driving for about 500 feet before she stops. Minutes after that happened, a neighbor reports that Alice ran up and banged on her door, asking for help. According to the neighbor, when she first arrived, Alice was very distressed, but wasn't crying. She asked the neighbor to please call an ambulance, saying that she thinks she just ran over her boyfriend. She explained to the neighbors that she was upset that night because I guess she thought she left her cell phone at the party and she wanted to go back and get it, but Ryan wouldn't let her. She then said that Ryan was mad because he thought that she was flirting with other men, so they were fighting and she never got a chance to go back for her phone. So she asked the neighbor to call 911 and also asked if she could use the neighbor's phone to call her mother, but once Alice got the phone, she couldn't remember her mom's number because of how distressed and panicked she was. After calling 911, the neighbor ran outside to see if she could help Ryan. The neighbor said that she was expecting for a man to be lying on the side of the road, crying out in pain. But instead, when she got outside, she saw that Ryan was completely under the car with his head visible and his foot sticking out. She tried calling out his name to see if Ryan was still conscious, but she got no answer. The neighbors described the whole situation as just being horrific. About 15 minutes after calling an ambulance, first responders finally arrived and started working to help Ryan. During the commotion, other neighbors came out to try and help the situation. 
According to other neighbors, the way Ryan looked under that car is like nothing they had ever seen before. The passenger side door was open and the engine wasn't even hot yet. There were drag marks near the car with blood smeared across the road and Ryan was really jammed up under that car. While paramedics were working with Ryan, Alice was inconsolable. She was all over the place. Neighbors said that they had to physically hold Alice up for parts, but they couldn't tell if it was because she was really drunk or if she was just that traumatized. Eventually, she did go inside of her home and sat on the sofa where she broke down and started hysterically sobbing. When officers went to speak with her, they immediately smelled alcohol on her breath. Uh, my wife called me to say it was an accident. Um, I came down to have a look and it was not us. Um, about 10 minutes ago, uh, there was a young lady in our house. Uh, she walked outside now with us and she said to my wife and myself that she's the driver. They had an argument and she drove over him. When paramedics spoke with Alice, she told them that the two had an argument that night because Ryan was accusing her of flirting with other guys at the party. She said that she got into her car when they got home because she wanted to drive back to the party and get her phone. But as she was trying to leave, Ryan jumped in front of her car, causing her to hit him. She said that she had no idea that she had dragged Ryan under the car like that. But after looking in Ryan's car, they found that her cell phone was actually in the car. So, we don't know if she truly believed that she had left her phone behind or not. It could have just been a made-up story to justify why she got in the car, or she could have truly believed that she left her phone. She was drunk after all, and I don't doubt that she may have thought that she lost her phone. But either way, we know that she did have her phone physically with her when she hit Ryan. First responders tried to save Ryan's life after being mowed down in that car, However, unfortunately, Ryan did die as a result of his injuries. Now, at first, police did not actually see the CCTV footage of the altercation, but obviously they knew that something was going on here, and clearly, whether it was intentional or not, Ryan was dead because of Alice's actions. Police then did a field sobriety test, and she miserably failed. In the breathalyzer, she blew twice the legal limit for driving. She was clearly very intoxicated and in no condition to drive in the first place. So, immediately, Alice was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving and was taken into the station for questioning. Upon her initial arrest, she told officers it was okay, that she deserved it. She was crying the entire drive over there with officers trying to calm her down, saying that they'll take care of her. But Alice responded, saying that she didn't deserve that. She didn't deserve their kindness. She also said at one point that they might as well shoot her in the head while she was crying and still in that state of hysteria. In the first interview with police, she replied no comment to every single one of their questions. In her initial court hearing on May 7th for the charges of driving under the influence, she was released on bail. Now, after getting Ryan's body out from under the car, he was sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy. According to the medical examiner, Ryan had suffered multiple fractures, cuts, and bruises to his face and torso, and he had brain swelling. His cause of death was determined to be the result of crush asphyxiation, he suffered a great deal in the moments before his death. Also, as a part of the investigation, of course, police looked into the surveillance video from the area around the party, inside the party, as well as from the neighbor who looks to have a doorbell camera or something like that. At the party, as I stated earlier, it appeared that Alice and Ryan started the night out by having a good time. They were dancing at the table together, drinking, and seemed happy. However, as we know, eventually, things turned sour as Ryan started chatting to Tiffany, which made Alice very jealous. Investigators saw that over the course of the night, Alice consumed two glasses of wine, two shots of rum, and a glass of champagne. Once again, we can see that she was very intoxicated. After the party, the pair is seen walking out to Ryan's car before he drives them home. 
at home, they see the altercation taking place and they see that Alice is clearly purposely trying to hit Ryan with her car. She hit him two times before backing up and hitting him a third time, dragging him 500 feet down the road before stopping. That said to investigators that Alice purposely hit Ryan. She was angry with him for flirting with other women. She lost her temper and when she got home, as stated by the witnesses, she played a game of chicken with her car and Ryan until she ultimately killed him. So, she was arrested once again on May 26th, 2022, this time on suspicion of murder. Right, okay, so Alice, based on the circumstances that we found out already, okay, I'm gonna arrest you on, no, listen to me, okay, I'm gonna, listen to me, I'm gonna arrest you on suspicion of murder, okay, so you don't have to say anything, but my own defense, you don't mention now, something that's later on in court, anything you do to me, we can have And I do believe this time she was denied bail and had to await her trial in jail. After about a year and a half, finally, by late December of 2023, Alice's trial for murder started. The prosecution stated that after the night of bickering and arguing, Alice lost her temper and killed Ryan. They talked about how Ryan was seen on cameras being a gregacious and outgoing party guest, having fun and dancing. Meanwhile, Alice was cold and not interested in socializing or having fun. After seeing how Ryan interacted with Tiffany, Alice became extremely jealous and the two had a huge fight. By the time the two got home, things had heated up. Ryan got out of the car, he kicked the door and tried walking off. But then Alice lost her cool and made the decision to use her car as a weapon. She got in and reversed towards Ryan, almost hitting him before driving backwards and forwards several more times, even driving off of the driveway and into the yard a bit with the intention of hitting Ryan. She hit him two times, but each time he got back up. So her hitting him that third time, only stopping after dragging him a few hundred feet. That shows that she intentionally hit him and not only that, but she intentionally tried to cause bodily injury. At the trial, Tiffany Faraday took the stand to testify. She told the courts how she knew that the way her and Ryan were behaving may have been a bit inappropriate and that she understood why Alice was glaring at her the whole night while she was talking to Ryan. Like I said, she left the party before Alice and Ryan, but after leaving that party shortly after 11 p.m., she noticed three missed calls from an Instagram account called Rai, which was a private account so she couldn't see who it belonged to. She tried calling the account back but got no answer, so she sent a message saying, who's this? She later found out that it was Ryan trying to call her from his account. We don't know if this was maybe while they were driving home or right after the party. Maybe he was getting out of the car and as he was being chased down by Alice, he called her for help. I don't know though, and I don't think we will ever truly know why those calls were made. You would think if he was just trying to follow her and get to know her more and wanted to sort of, you know, talk on a long-term basis, like, hey, we really clicked, let's keep talking, he would have probably sent her a message instead of calling her three times, but that's just my thought. The defense, on the other hand, were arguing that this was all just an accident. It wasn't an intentional murder. At the trial, Alice testified in her own defense. She said that at the party, Ryan was actually the one who got mad at her and started the fight on the way home. As she told first responders and neighbors, Ryan started accusing her of flirting with other guys. She said that he called her a slag and a whore and said that she embarrassed him in front of everyone. When they got home, she said that she went into her car telling Ryan to just go inside and go to bed, assuring him that she was going to her mother's and that she would be back in the morning. To this, Ryan allegedly replied, your mom's effing dead. At that point, Alice said that she just wanted to scare Ryan with the car, but when she realized that she actually hit him and dragged him along the road, she said that it was like stepping into a nightmare. She was in hell 
and it didn't feel real. But of course, that CCTV footage kind of spelled out the entire situation and showed that Alice drank much more than she should have, she got angry, and she did purposely hit Ryan, her fiance, with her car. Not only did she hit him with her car, but she hit him twice, and both times he stood up but that wasn't enough for Alice. It wasn't enough to just hit him and let him, you know, be scared and get up from being hit by the car. She had to seriously injure him. And that is shown by the third time that she hit him with her car. So after three weeks of trial, the jury was sent off for deliberations. And after a few hours, the jury came back and determined that Alice is guilty of the murder of Ryan Watson. It was reported that Alice showed no emotion while the verdict was being read, and after finding Alice guilty, the judge said that the only sentence the law allows for her crime is life in prison. However, as of the time I'm recording this video, we do not yet know her official sentence, but we should know very soon. So, whenever we find out, I will let you all know. Of course, Ryan's family is happy that Alice was found guilty and they think that she will be right where she belongs in prison for taking the life of their bright, intelligent, kind son. Obviously, the guilty verdict won't bring Ryan back or even stop the hurt that they will have to suffer for the rest of their lives. But at the very least, there has been justice for Ryan's senseless murder. Today, we finally got justice for our beloved Ryan. Ryan's death has left our family heartbroken. He was taken from us far too soon. Just a young man of 24 years old, with his whole life ahead of him. He had just started his working career with the charities at Headways, with helping other people, which he loved to do. Ryan had just a big personality. He was bubbly, fun-loving, caring person with a heart of gold and he'd do anything for anybody. Ryan loved animals and he loved his dogs. Ryan was always good at sports like football, BMX biking and foot playing pool. He loved hanging out with his mates and playing his music. He will forever be missed and all his family and friends are heartbroken to know that we will never get to see Ryan again. Words cannot express how devastated we are with the loss of Ryan. He touched the hearts and enriched so many lives of everyone he knew. We only had 24 years together, but we are proud to say he was our son and a fantastic big brother. So that is where the case sits as of right now. This was definitely an interesting one, especially given that we got to see the CCTV footage. I think if we didn't see that footage, this case might have gone a little bit differently. Who knows if she would have actually been convicted of murder because she easily could have argued that she accidentally hit him and didn't realize that he was being dragged under her car. But the fact that we got to see that footage and we saw that she hit him two times with her car before hitting him that third fatal time, I think that shows that this was intentional. I think that it's obvious that Alice was enraged and it's clear that she hit Ryan with her car on purpose. If she stopped after the first hit, I could see her arguing that it was either an accident or she was just trying to scare him. But the fact that she went after him so many times, still trying to hit him for a third time after he survived the first two, I think that shows her intent of killing him. Now, I do think that after she hit him and dragged him with her car, she realized what she did and freaked out. I do think she was panicked and truly hysterical after hitting him, but that doesn't mean that she didn't do it on purpose. I think she was just afraid of what was going to happen to her after police found out what she did. And I think that's what actually caused the hysteria. I don't think she was surprised that she hurt Ryan because I do think it was intentional. I do think she probably regrets what she did, but at the same time, she didn't really show any emotion at her court hearing, so... Who knows what she thinks of all of this. But that is all I have for today's video, and now I want to know what you all think. Do you think Alice did this on purpose, or do you think it was an accident? Do you think she fully meant to kill Ryan, or did she just want to hurt him? 
Personally, I think she wanted to kill him, but I want to know what you all think about all of this in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time.